And baseball fans, welcome to the play-in edition of the 64. 64 of the greatest baseball teams of all time will go head-to-head -head here on Monday Night Baseball and Out of the Park 25. But today, we have the teams trying to play in to earn their spot in this vaunted field. And tonight, we get a showdown between two NL West rivals, the Colorado Rockies of 2007, a team that reached the World Series that year only to be swept out of the World Series. If there's one team that can relate to those October woes and heartbreak, it's their opponent here tonight. It is from San Diego, California, the 1998 San Diego Padres. Two teams in the NL West going toe-to-toe -to -toe for an opportunity to play in the 64. Let's introduce you to the starting lineups here tonight. First for the home team, the San Diego Padres. In left, it's Greg Vaughn, who had a monster season in 1998. In center, Ruben Rivera will get the start. He's your starting center fielder here tonight over Steve Finley. And in right, it will be Mark Sweeney. Mark Sweeney, the right fielder. Around the horn we go on the infield. Kevin Caminiti, former Houston Astro, holding down the hot spot at third. Up the middle, Chris Gomez and Kilvio Veras. At first base, Wally Joyner. And behind the dish, Jim Lairitz will catch for the ace, the right-hander, Kevin Brown. Brown on the year in 1998. An 18-game winner, 2.38 ERA. 257 strikeouts in 257 innings pitched. Offensively for the visiting Colorado Rockies, who had to go on quite the tear to reach the postseason in 2007. One of the hottest finishes in Major League Baseball history. Willie Tavares will lead off. Todd Helton will bat second, followed by Matt Holliday in the three spot. Brad Hopp batting cleanup here tonight, followed by Garrett Atkins. The DH will be Ryan Spielborgs. The young Troy Tulowitzki batting seventh. The catcher here tonight batting eighth is Chris Iannetta. And batting ninth is Jamie Carroll. And with that, we get you ready for baseball here tonight. A beautiful day for baseball in San Diego. Take a look at your weather report. It is 63 degrees, no wind, and clear skies. All right, folks, let's get ready for the first pitch here on Monday Night Baseball between the 07 Rockies and the 1998 San Diego Padres. Not an empty seat to be found here in the play-in game. 2-2 pitch on the way from Kevin Brown. There's a ground ball to third, scooped up, fielded cleanly by Ken Caminiti, and that's how this game will start. That brings up Todd Helton. Helton. Almost wound up being in the San Diego Padres farm system. Was drafted in the second round in 1992 out of Central High School in Knoxville, Tennessee. Helton, of course, decided to continue to play the amateur route. And, in fact, went to the University of Tennessee where he played college football. Backup quarterback to Heath Schuler as a freshman and a sophomore. And then the starting gig... In Knoxville, open up his junior year. But a knee injury midway through that junior year wiped out his year, opening the door for a young man by the name of Peyton Manning, who never looked back. Todd Helton at the plate, first pitch on the way to him. He grounds this to short. And two up and two down as Gomez fires across the diamond. That brings up Matt Holliday. Holliday. Monster season in 07, where he was the NLCS MVP. Wound up scoring the game-winning run in the NL tiebreaker. Cap the, uh, capping that uh, remarkable run of the uh, Rockies in the 07 regular season. Remember, they won 14 of 15 games in the regular season, capped off by a 13-inning in thriller against the Padres to win that tiebreaker. It was... It was Matt Holliday who wound up scoring that game-winning run in the 13th inning. 1-2 on the way. Popped up on the infield. 
First baseman Joyner will make the catch, and that'll do it. Going to the bottom of the first in San Diego. Defensively for the Rockies here in the bottom of the first, Matt Holliday, Willie Tavares, and Brad Hopp are your outfield. Atkins is at third. Tulowitzki and Carroll are up the middle, shortstop and second base, respectively. Dodd Helton, gold glove, first baseman. Chris Iannetta catching here tonight for Ubaldo Jimenez. 23-year-old right-hander out of the Dominican Republic. Four wins, four losses in 15 starts, and that is who Clint Hurdle will go with in this uh, all-important play-in game. Offensively for the Padres, their batting order. Harris, Joyner, Caminiti, Vaughn, Gwynn will DH, Layritz, Sweeney, Rivera, and Gomez batting ninth. Gilvio Varis, your leadoff man, led the majors in stolen bases as a rookie in that 1995 season. Grounds out to first base, and that's how the inning will start for the Pots. Brings up another fantastic rookie uh, when he was in his freshman campaign, if you will, as a major leaguer. Of course, we're talking about Wally Joyner, an all-star his rookie year back in 1986. At 290 with 22 home runs that year for the Angels. 2-2 pitch on the way to Wally. Not his world. He'll pop it up. And the third baseman, Atkins, will call everybody off. Two down. Ken Caminiti now digs in. 2-1 offering to him, and he lines it right to short for out number three to Tulawitzki. Loves it, and the side is retired. After one, we are scoreless in the play-in game between the 07 Rockies and the 98 Padres. All right, inning number two for Colorado. Rocktober, as it were. We mentioned that Torrid stretched to end the 2007 regular season, winning 14 of their final 15 regular season games. Well, they wound up sweeping Philadelphia in the National League Divisional Series. And then the same against the Arizona Diamondbacks and the NLCS. A preposterous 21 wins in 22 games going all the way back to the final couple weeks of the regular season. Of course, they cooled off real quick after that in the World Series. The only blemish in that 2007 season was, of course, what happened when they met the Boston Red Sox in the 07 World Series. Brad Hopp will lead off. 291 hitter takes a swing at that 3 1 offering. Ground sharply to third. Caminiti makes the play for out number one. Boy, Ken Caminiti, you talk about uh, how fantastic he is offensively, but how much of a game changer was he in his prime defensively? I mean, nothing got by him, and you saw those highlights. They still t uh, stand the test of time. Some of those throws from his knees, from his keister. That guy had a hose at third base. Garrett Atkins now swinging a miss. Strike three, our first strikeout of the game. So Kevin Brown mows him down. Brown, as we mentioned, those 257 strikeouts in 257 innings pitched. 1K per inning pitched in 1998. Spillborgs now at the plate. DH here tonight. Takes a 1-1 offering. Grounds this Softly to the shortstop. I throw across, but I stretch by the first baseman, and that will do it. Colorado goes quietly here in the second. We go to the bottom of two with the pods coming up. Four, five, six in the 98 Padre order. Greg Vaughn to lead off. Vaughn with a shot to left. Diving grab made out and left, and it is a dandy of a catch. By Matt Holliday. Holliday making the grab. Let's take another look at that replay. Sinking liner and Holliday laying out, making the catch. As if there was any doubt. And now it's Mr. Padre, Tony Gwynn. Tony Gwynn, 1998. Would be the end of his run of four straight NL batting crowd. Missed out despite a 321 average. That was actually a low average in the Tony Gwynn era. 
Pitcher 1 0 to Tony. Quinn grounds this. The first baseman. Elton takes it unassisted, two down. Now Jim Leyritz. Leyritz on a 1 1 offering. Fly ball into the gap, left center field, and that one is stolen away. Taveras with a nice running catch, and the side is retired. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on base. After two, we're scoreless in the play in game between the Pods and the Rocks. Top of three here in San Diego. Troy Tulowitzki will lead off. Seven, eight, and nine in the Rocky order. Tulowitzki, a 291 hitter. Tulo, just his second season as a big leaguer. His first full season, 291, 24 home runs, 99 RBI. Also had 104 runs scored. First pitch to Tulo. Tulo going the other way. Fly ball to right. That one will be caught. It occurs to me that, you know, we, we have our replay sponsors and whatnot. I'm wondering if there's ever a diving catch in the outfield, if we should uh, invoke the name of Ezra Denny as the replay sponsor on those diving catches in the outfield. Ezra, what do you think? Chris Ionetta is at the plate. Ground ball to short. 6-3 on her scorecard. Gomez making the play. Two down. Jamie Carroll, number nine hitter in the order. Now his first plate appearance. First pitch on the way to Carroll. Carroll golfs this one to left, and there's a diving catch in left, and that'll do it. We go to the bottom of third in San Diego. The Padres coming to back. Sweeney, Rivera, and Gomez scheduled batters for the Padres, 7, 8, and 9. Mark Sweeney, 234 hitter and 192 at-bats in 1998. Round ball to third. Nice play by Atkins. One down. Everybody's diving here tonight. Season's on the line. They can sense the stakes here in the 64. Play in game number one. Ruben Rivera, one two to him. But Rivera grounds to short. Easy throw across the diamond. A little bit too close for comfort, but Tulowitzki gets him by a step. Two down. Now the number nine hitter, Chris Gomez. Gomez, fly to left. And a diving catch made out and left by Holiday. One, two, three. The Padres go in order. At the end of three, we're scoreless between the Padres and the Rockies. Getting a lot of those tonight. 2007 Rockies now at the plate here in the fourth. Scoreless game and a whole lot of zeros up on that scorecard. And on the scoreboard as well. Where's Where's Paul? Where's Spore? Does he have anything to say about what's going on here tonight? Willie Tavares will lead off against Kevin Brown. Third baseman playing in on the grass. Brown ball to short. And Gomez scoops it up, throws the first one down. Now it's Todd Helton. Helton, this was a down year for him, kind of on the back end of his career, 34 at the time. Hitting 320 with 17 home runs and 91 RBI. But if you look back in, in his career, there was a stretch where he hit an OPS, had an OPS north of 1,000 for five straight seasons. 2,000. He had a 1.162. The next year, 1.116. And 1,006, 1,088. 1,088. Talking high batting average, high home run count, good amount of walks to amazing slugging percentage, just otherworldly stats for Todd Helton. Of course, part of that due to where he played his home games, but also was a strong hitter on the road as well. Ground ball to the first baseman. Joyner will make the play. Two down. Yeah, we mentioned the, those numbers that kind of on the on the downturn 
in 07. Yeah, OPS at 928. And yes, his home run count down. Doubles were still high at 42. And still the walks. Still the plate discipline. And when you get a 434 on base percentage, you pair that up with a 494 slugging percentage, you're going to get a pretty robust OPS. 2 2 on the way to Helton. Helton grounds us up the middle to the second baseman. Harris makes the play. And the side is retired. Settings for this one are 1960. So. A lot of the teams in this play-in tourney are from the 1980s, 90s, and 2010s. In fact, all of them are. We have one team from the 1980s playing in this tourney. Gilvia Veris will lead off. Veris squares the bunt right back to the pitcher. Easy. Th oh, it got through the first baseman. Bad throw over to first. Jimenez's throw off the mark. Helton couldn't get to it. That's an error. Varus will reach second. So one team from the 80s, that would be the 1982 Milwaukee Braves who are in this field. Or sorry, the Milwaukee Brewers, I beg your pardon. Let me write that down so I don't uh, have a Freudian slip here moving forward. Milwaukee Brewers, not the Braves. The Brewers uh, that year going 95 and 67. As Varus is on second base. And we have found that uh, through all the simulations, 1960, 1959, we love these settings uh, because you'll still get home runs. You'll still get some base hits. Most importantly, the pitchers are protected. So if you are playing with a dead ball team, and there are a handful of teams from the early 1900s in this field. And same for the 1920s as well, and the 1910s for that matter. That those teams are protected, and yet still the modern teams from the 80s and beyond still very much have a shot. So that was uh, that was the test for us. We found that 1959-1960 was the sweet spot. Wally Joyner at the plate. Joyner pops it up out in no man's land, but the shortstop, Tulowitzki, is on the move and make the catch for out number one. So we have one team from the 1980s. We have several from the 1990s, including the team you're seeing here tonight, the 1998 Padres. Also in the play-in, you have the 1997 Florida Marlins and the 1998 Atlanta Braves. Rio to Caminiti. I'll take it inside for ball four. Also from the 2000s, you have the 2004 and five St. Louis Cardinals. We also have the 2002 World Series champion, Anaheim Angels, and the 2008 Tampa Bay Rays, as well as the team we're seeing tonight from Colorado, the 2007 Colorado Rockies. All these teams are in the play-in tourney. Caminiti on first. Varis on second for Greg Vaughn. Boy, dangerous spot for you, Baldo Jimenez. Vaughn, a monster 50 home run season that really came out of nowhere in 1998. 1-1 to Vaughn. Vaughn grounds a short. This could be two. They'll get the force at second. On to first for two. They'll get the 6-4-3 double play to get out of the inning. So, the Padres get nothing at the end of four. We are scoreless in the play-in between the Rockies and the Padres. Now, we did run a simulation just for giggles between these two teams uh, before this one. We, we like to do our homework here on the channel. We're in the fifth inning. Brad Hopp will lead off. Here's a 1-1 from Kevin Brown. Brown ball, little broken bat. Brown, throw to first. Didn't get him. It's an infield single. So the first hit of the ball game, a broken bat, little nubber back to the mound. Another look here on the replay. No play. Oh, Hop is on first. We tried this in modern day settings as well, not 1960, and this being played in San Diego both times. Let's just say this high scoring 16 to 8 in our simulation. I won't let you know which team won, but 16 to 8 was a score. In modern-day settings, of course, that's just, just one small sample size in a one-game playoff. 
Garrett Atkins on a 1-2. Atkins grounds the shore. They'll get the force at second. On to first for the double play. Boy, that had some English on it. Two down. So a pitcher's best friend there. Kevin Brown rolls up a double play. Gomez to Varis across to Joyner. Ryan Spielborgs now settles in at the plate. He's 0 for 1. Spielborgs with a line shot to the second baseman. Nice play by Varis. Side retired. One hit. It came on an infield single. We go to the bottom of the fifth between the Pods and the Rockies. Tony Gwynn to lead off for the Padres, who are still looking for their first base hit. Rocks got theirs in the top of the fifth on an infield single. Aldo Jimenez, 2-2 pitch. Gwynn with a liner to center, and there it is. So Mr. Padre is now Mr. Base Runner. Tony Gwynn, first hit of the night for San Diego. But Jim Layrett stepping in. Ubaldo Jimenez from the stretch for the first time. Going the other way, and it's another base hit. Leiritz with a single. Gwynn heading for third. The throw gets through the third baseman. Now he's heading for home, and he will score. Good, Candy. Padres score on a disastrous turn of events for Colorado. They take a 1-0 lead. Boy, we've seen so much good defense here tonight, but this throw was a rocket, but it went right through the third baseman. The air is charged to hop. It's one to nothing, San Diego. Boy, well, you look at that cannon, and Hop has a very highly rated arm. Pods are on the board, one to nothing here in the fifth. And they're not done. They've got Jim Layrich now in scoring position on second for Mark Sweeney. Sweeney, high fly ball, deep right field, and gone! Sweeney got all of that one. Three, nothing Padres. Boy, how quickly things have changed for you, Ubaldo Jimenez. Three runs in. It's 3 nothing San Diego. Light hitting Ruben Rivera now at the plate. Rivera, a little tapper. Catcher comes out from behind the dish. Throw to first. Nyanetta's throw is in time. One down. Chris Gomez, now number nine hitter in the order. Gomez grounds this the other way to second. Two down. Back to the top of the order we go for San Diego. Silvio Veras, 2-0 pitch to him. Veras grounds this to the first baseman. Helton will take it unassisted, side retired. Pods, though, get three at the end of five. It's San Diego three and Colorado nothing. And welcome back here. We're in San Diego for inning number six, where the Padres have erupted for three runs in the bottom of the fifth taking a 3-0 lead. Can Kevin Brown hold on to that lead? Really in the prime of his career after coming over from Florida where he was a standout with the Marlins. And now here in San Diego, 18 wins, 7 losses, and a 2-3-8 ERA. Brown will work from the windup. Only hit so far he's given up an infield single. Came right back to him. Troy Tulowitzki at the plate. Brown has faced the minimum. One, two, swing and a miss. Strike three. Brown gets another strikeout. That is Brown's second on the evening. Chris Ionetta, 0 for 1 thus far tonight. 3 2. He lines this to the second baseman. Varis clearly doing his homework on Ionetta at the right place at the right time. Brings up the number nine hitter, Jamie Carroll. Carroll on a 2-1 offering as he grounds this to short. And the Rockies go quietly in the sixth. We go to the bottom of the sixth in San Diego with the Padres on top. Three to nothing in the play-in game. Paulie Joyner to lead off. 
Well, the no hitter, no more as Ubaldo got lit up. Three runs on three hits. Wally Joyner, though, if you ever have a situation where you need to break up a no hitter, he might be your guy. I want to take you back to 1986 when, as a rookie, Wally Joyner broke up not one, but two no hitters in the ninth inning, no less. First game against Texas's Charlie Huff with one out against the Anaheim Angels. And then he did it again against Walt Ter uh, Terrell with two out. So Wally Joyner, Mr. No hitter, no fun guy. <laughs> Wally Joyner grounds this to short. Nice play there by Tulo. Official score right now. Yes, let's take a look at this. And they have charged all three runs earned to Ubaldo. Despite the fact that Brad Hopp was charged with an error on that throw. That's what the box score says. Oh, the official ruling still. There are two errors on the ledger against Colorado. That is a great point. Now, none of these statistics in the play-in will carry over into the 64 for what it's worth. So once these uh, games are finished, it'll start with a fresh slate, a clean slate, moving into the 64. All stats will then be compiled moving forward. Ken Caminiti now at the plate. 0-2 pitch to Caminiti swinging a miss. Strike three. Jimenez gets the K. That is his first on the evening. Now Greg Vaughn. Vaughn, a four-time All-Star. 50 home runs that year in 1998. Fourth in the major leagues. Imagine hitting 50 home runs. By far a career high. Next highest was 41. Greg Vaughn hitting 50 home runs in 1998. And he finished a distant fourth. Ahead Vaughn in the home run chase of 1998. Of course, he wasn't in the chase. Ken Griffey Jr., Sammy Sosa, and Mark McGuire with 70. Here that saved baseball. Ground ball through the hole on the left side. So Vaughn with a big turn, and he'll get a base hit. San Diego's fourth on the evening. Now Tony Gwynn. Gwynn on a 2-2. Gwynn grounds this to second. Throw will be to first. And that will do it. One runner st uh, stranded at the end of six. San Diego still on top. Three to nothing. All right. To the seventh inning we go in San Diego with Willie Taveras leading off for the Rockies. One, two, three. It will be Taveras, Helton, and Holiday. 3-2 on the way. And there's a base hit. Boy, it's really fun to see the opportunities to see the, the different lineups that we're going to see in this 64-team tournament. And you think about some of these players in the Rocky order. Helton with the numbers he put up in the 2000s. Matt Holiday as well. But then you start looking at some of the opponents, who they'll be playing. And we kind of joke sometimes, or you might say a a modern day murderer's row with some of these orders, but then you'll see the real murderer's row of the 1927 New York Yankees. It's going to be fun seeing all these teams go head to head. Got a good one here. Todd Helton is at the plate. 1 0 pitch to Todd. Helton grounds to short. They'll get the force at second. There will be no throw. So they do get the lead runner. They force out. Helton is on on a fielder's choice. Matt Holiday, one-two pitch to Holiday. He grounds this up the middle. Boy, they're getting a ton of double plays here tonight. Four, six, three on her scorecard as we head to the seventh inning stretch between the Padres and the Rockies.
There, Captain Kegley getting the April Fool's Chris Davis. Couldn't happen to a better guy. You'd love to see it. Padres will send their six, seven, and eight hitters in the order. Leyritz, Sweeney, and Rivera against Ubaldo Jimenez. Colorado, it's do or die time for them. No idea yet if we'll see. Maybe Jeremy Affelt, friend of the program, if he'll come in. Get back to the game here as the red hot Colorado Rockies of 2007 have cooled off. And they keep the Padres in check here in the seventh to keep it a three run game. Layritz with a 2 2 pitch on the way. Right. Swing and a miss, strike three. Ubaldo gets strikeout numero dos. Two Ks, one walk. Four hits allowed so far for Ubaldo. Mark Sweeney. Sweeney, a quiet hitting utility guy in nineteen or in nineteen ninety eight. Look at his numbers on the year: twenty eight year old Mark Sweeney, nineteen ninety eight, two thirty four average, two home runs in one hundred twenty two games played, and guess what? Mark Sweeney with a home run, a two-run shot here tonight. Mark Sweeney, of all people in this order, on this field, it's been Mark Sweeney so far who provided the fireworks. First pitch to Sweeney. He goes the other way, line drive, and it's caught out in left by Holiday. Ruben Rivera now at the play. Rivera. And there's a clean single to left. Little blooper over the shortstop in the third baseman. Fifth hit of the night for the Padres. They try to extend this three run lead. 2 2. Chris Gomez. Ground ball into the hole. Past the shortstop. It got through to Lewitsky. Runner heading for third. And Rivera slides in head first, safe. The throw to third, not in time. Gomez to second on the single. And now San Diego with two on and two out. Infield will play back here with two down. And Kilvio Veris at the plate. Veris, ground ball, second base, and that will do it. Padres strand two. Colorado dodges a bullet. We head to the eighth between the pods and the Rockies. Brad Hopp will be your leadoff man in the eighth inning. Hopp one of just two Colorado hits so far. They have not been able to figure out, figure out Kevin Brown yet. Kevin Brown, here's his one, two. Check swing, strike three, and another K for the ace, Kevin Brown. Now it's Garrett Atkins. Atkins, a standout high school career from Irvine, California, home of the Anteaters. But he had thoughts beyond UC Irvine. He was recruited in high school by Pepperdine, USC, Oklahoma State, Cal State Fullerton, and UCLA. Of course, Atkins ultimately chose UCLA, where he would be a three-time All-American. By the way, his roommate and teammate, while with the Bruins, the one and only Chase Utley. What a combo. 3-2 pitch on the way to Atkins. Slow for ball four. Brown surrenders the walk. Just his first free pass of the night. Just three base runners so far. Two hits and a walk. Spielborgs now steps in. DH hitting 299 in 2007. Here's your one, two. And here's a strike three. Bring him up. Another K. Spielborgs goes down on strikes. Atkins remains on first, and Troy Tulowitzki at the plate. Tulo is 0 for 2. And a diving stop made by Varus at second, and that will do it. 
Colorado strands one. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Padres leading three to nothing in the playing game. Wally Joyner to lead off against Ubaldo Jimenez here in the eighth inning. 2-1 to Wally. Ground ball to second. Bobbled. Helton couldn't hold on to it. It will be an error. Let's see who is charged with Colorado's third error. And it will be on Helton. So Todd Helton will be charged with the error. Wally Joyner is on first. Uncharacteristic for the Gold Glove winner, Todd Helton. Ken Caminiti, 3-2 pitch to him. He'll take it from ball four, and Jimenez issues a free pass. Now, you will notice that we are uh, playing with the uh, immersion graphics that we've uh, been able to utilize. Technically, these are called the... Uh, the screen filters, but we love to call them the immersion factor. We're playing with standard saturated color. Remember, uh, we'll usually go with the home team in their color. 1998, the days before high definition. So just a little bit more of that realism in out of the park baseball. Two aboard, Joiner on second, Caminiti on first, Greg Vaughn at the plate. Oh, he has a chance to blow it wide open. And it goes through the catcher. Ionetta couldn't handle it. It's a wild pitch charged to Jimenez. Joyner and Caminiti both advance. And that will bring the infield in. So Clint Hurdle motions in his infield. They'll try to take away the run. And still Ubaldo remains in. Hurdle has not gone to the bullpen here. Remember, there is no tomorrow. If you lose tonight... Colorado and their run ends right here. Greg Vaughn at the play. Two strike count. Here's your 2-2. Two, two. Vaughn grounds the short. Throw home. Will be in time. They got him. Joyner try to slide around the tag. They got him at home. Caminiti to third on the play. Vaughn to first on the fielder's choice. Field infield remains in. Tony Gwynn, runners on the corners, one out. And Tony grounds to second. They'll get the force at second and on to first for two. An inning ending double play. Colorado gets out of the jam as we head to the ninth. Last chance for Colorado in the ninth, trailing three to nothing. Chris Ionetta leading off against Kevin Brown, who's looking to go the distance. And boy, if he can go all nine innings and preserve that bullpen for uh, the Padres, that would be huge. Kevin Brown, his pitch count at 99, just one south of the century mark. Well, I appreciate it, Lone Star. Got to remember, no two-minute breaks here on, on stream. Usually when you're calling a baseball game, you get a little commercial break. We do not have that luxury. Will we see a call to the bullpen and possibly Trevor Hoffman? Or can Kevin Brown finish what he started? Boy, has he been good. Eight innings, one walk, two hits, and four strikeouts. Brown from the windup, up against Chris Ionetta to start the ninth. Swing and a miss, strike three. Got him on the heater. So Ionetta goes down on strikes, and that's how the ninth begins. Jamie Carroll now settles in. Hitless in two at bat so far. going to check just making sure no pinch hitters no bullpen I just want to make sure that the AI had control and known to happen all right Jamie Carroll will still go up to the plate 225 hitter in 2007 2-0 on the way from Brown 
Ground ball, shortstop, easy play made by Gomez. And now the Rockies are down to their final out. Colorado, which has been red hot in 2007. Winning 21 of 22 games to get to the World Series and then being swept by Boston. If they don't win here, their run in the 64 is over before it even begins. Crowd on its feet. They want to see a complete game by Kevin Brown. Willie Tavares at the plate. 2-2 pitch. Line drive. Short stop. And that will do it. The Padres are moving on. One win away from going to the 64. Your final here tonight. Padres 3. Rockies nothing.